Hi, welcome to my channel. A couple videos ago, I briefly mentioned in my video that I had purchased the, the Creative Memories Digital Art Kit and I had printed some and cut them on my Cricut. On that video, several people have since asked me if I would do a tutorial on how I did that. So that's what I'm here to do today is to give you a tutorial. But let me give my disclaimer first. <laughs> I've um, had my Cricut for several years now. I have the um, Explore 2. As I love it and I understand how to use it, but I know that it can do so much more than even I have conquered. <laughs> so as I go through the video, you're more experienced with the Cricut and I, if I'm doing something that you find there's an easier way, please list it in the comments and help. we can help each other uh, walk through the process. If you have any questions, Again, please put those in the comments. If I can't answer them, I, I can um, ask around and see if I can answer them, or uh, maybe somebody else in the comments can answer. So what I have on my desk here is some files that I have already did the print and cut on. So with this is using the Showtime collection. And for this collection, I did get the embellishment pack, and but not the flocked embellishments. I just got the plain ones. And I also got the sticker pack that went with that as well. Okay, but I did not get the matte pack. And I got, of course, the paper pack. I just really loved the icons and the, the stickers and the embellishments that came with it. So I went back and I purchased the digital art kit. Okay, so that's where we stand today. What I have here is some files that I already did. Here is the balloons, the blue balloons. Now this one is the original, and this one is the one I did the print and cut on. Okay, now you'll see the colors are a little bit different and everybody might have a slight difference when they print due to your uh, the ink type that you have and the type of printer that you have. But for me, I think it's pretty, pretty good. I like it. I actually like that they're a little bit different shades as I could maybe even use these on the same page or together. And then here, this one I tried to make the exact same size. Okay, so I actually took a ruler out, measured this one to create this one. Okay, but now this one, obviously, I shrunk it down. So I did the original first, and then I shrunk it down in my inside the Cricut software to make it smaller. Same with this one. I really love, this is the original, and I really love this journaling box. I actually think this is an appropriate size journaling box, but I printed it a little bit smaller. And again, you can see a slight color difference because of the ink in my printer. Also, you might notice there ever so slight a little hole in mine and not in the original. And that's just something I'm working on trying to get out of out of there. But it's really not a big deal. If Once it's on your page, you would never even see it. Or you could put a little um, embellishment on there. But see, I probably would tuck it. You can tuck it right in and you would never even see the little hole. Some of them are very straightforward cuts and others are a little bit more detailed. Let's go ahead and get into this. And I'll try and walk you through the best that I can. So once you purchase the digital art kit, you need to go log back into your Creative Memories personal account and go here to where it says my downloadable products and then click on that. So once you click on it, you'll be taken to this page that'll show any and all downloadable products that you have purchased. So of course yours is going to look different than mine. This is my personal page and yours will only show the ones that you have purchased. So here on the screen, you'll see I bought one package of, for Showtime collection, and it's broken into three areas, the elements, the matte packs, and the paper pack. And it's the element pack that we're gonna work with today. But just be aware that you'll receive different files for different items that are included in the pack that you purchased. This one here is indicating the map pack. And this one here identifies the paper pack. So like I said, we're gonna work with the element pack today. So the first thing we need to do is get it downloaded onto your computer. And here's where it might be a little different, whether you're a Mac or a Windows-based user. But either way, you wanna click the blue highlighted area and get it downloaded onto your computer. 
once you click it, it's going to be downloaded into your download folder. So you'll find it either under Finder in your Mac or under your download folders on your Windows based computer. Today I'm using a Mac, but I have also done this on my laptop, which is a Windows based computer. So it can be done either way, but either way, it will come into your download folders as a zip file. So we need to unzip that. With a Mac, you just click right on it. And with the Windows based application, it will be toward the top of your computer and you just click the uh, little icon that looks like a zipper. Once you've unzipped it, you should check your download files and you'll see a list of all the elements that have been now downloaded. Okay, let me switch back over to my screen. Okay. Here's my screen of my downloaded file in my Mac. Now, when I wanted to search for it, I just typed in the word Showtime here and it brought up everything that I have downloaded. So I have downloaded um, all three of the packs. So the elements, the mats and the paper. Uh, but today we're, like I said, we're just gonna work with the elements, but just to show you, it says here element, this one, says MP, I believe that that's for Matt Pack. And then they're, you know, kind of spelled out for us. So border, um, if it's just an element, it just has its name. And uh, let's find some paper. I think this one is paper. Yep. Okay, so that's paper. So you'll see also that they are PNG files or JPEG files which is what Cricut can read. It can read either one of those. So it's awesome that Creative Memories has saved it in that file to make it easier for us to read on the Cricut. Okay, now if you want to be able to see these, you just click the little button at the top up here that shows for um, aligning them by photo. And then we can see them all individually as photos. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And that way we can just select which ones we want. Okay, so let me put this one aside and take you into my Cricut. Okay, so here I have a blank canvas on my Cricut. If you weren't sure how to do that, when you first come in, you just say new project and it will open up a blank canvas. Then what we wanna do is we wanna come down here to where it says upload. We click upload. And you'll see here that I have, oh, I've been working on some of these like just the ones I just showed you. Here's the most recent ones that I did, um, but I've also done some other ones from the Showtime collection as well. So yes, I've been having, a, having some fun with this. Okay, so now I should have both on my screen. So what we wanna do is when we come into the Cricut, I'll come over here a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. We're in the Cricut, we clicked upload, it took us to this screen. Now we wanna choose this button right here that says upload image. And once we're in, you'll see it says that you can drag and drop your image here, or you can browse and look for it. So what's easier for me is to just drag and drop. So I'm gonna slide back over my other window with my elements showing, and I'm going to pick one that we're gonna work on. So I, I think for the first one, I wanna do one that is pretty straightforward cut. So like, for example, the journaling box that I did, see if we can find that here. The journaling box I did was very straightforward. It doesn't take a lot. Here it is right here. It didn't take a lot of cuts or pasting and any special thing to get that to print. So let's find another one. I know there's one I wanna work on. Let me just find it here. Here it is. This one that says lights, camera, action. So I highlighted, if I, I clicked it, which highlighted it. Now I could just, Click it again and hold down your mouse and you can just drag it right over and drop it into your file. And then it comes right up into the Cricut. Okay, let me go back to just my Cricut so you don't have to see all that. Okay, so here it is in our Cricut. And we now have to pick a image type. And so it's asking if we wanna do simple, moderately complex, or complex. Well, this one is like I was saying, it's a very straightforward cut. We're going to print it onto our computer. So there's not a lot of uh, detail here. So we're gonna go ahead and pick simple and then go down to the bottom of your page and push continue. And it's gonna bring you to this page. What this shows you is this one's not 
the greatest example to show you, but it shows the background and how anything that's with these little purple or bluish boxes that will not be cut. And so when you have other images, which on the second one, I'll show you, we want to make sure that those are all um, filled in with the little uh, boxes of blue or purple. Okay. But this one is, so we're going to say apply. Then it takes us to the next screen. And this screen is, if you wanted to bring it in just as a cut image, it would just print this square with the rounded corners. So maybe you have a need for that, then you would click that. But what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm going to select print, then cut, and then I'm going to say upload. So now it's taking it and actually uploading it into my Cricut software under my file name only. Okay. And there it is. Okay. Once we, once it's in here, this is just you specifically, you can click it and highlight it and then say, add to your canvas. And there it is. Now, all of them come in ginormous. <laughs> so we want to make it shrink it down so it can be a little bit more manageable. Okay. So I'm going to just say three inches for now, three by three inches. Okay. So that makes it just a tad bit manageable. I'm going to come back to my screen for a minute here. Okay. Let me show you from the die cuts, the one that it is. Okay. So this is the one that we're working on. So let's go ahead and measure this one. Okay. So this one is uh, about two and a half by about two, two and three quarters, two and a half by about two and three quarters. So what a, I really, I like this one, but what I really wanted to do was to shrink it down. So let me take you back to the Cricut and we're going to do both. We're going to print one, um, and try and do it two and a half by two and three quarters. And then we're going to shrink it down as well. So I'm back here at my Cricut and we said it was 2.75 width and 2.5 height. Okay. So that one should print pretty close to what we see in the embellishment pack. Okay. So our next step would be once we have this one on our screen. Now, like I said, this one is a pretty straightforward one. There's nothing else that we need to do with it. Okay. So I am going to just duplicate it and I'm going to make a smaller one. So let's say I want to do a 1.75 and then here I want to just make it 1.5. Okay. So now we're going to have two of them. Then we come over here to make it. So there they are on the screen. I like it. So I'm going to say continue and I'm going to say send to the printer. Your specific printer needs are going to come up here and then you'll come over here and push and click print. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll be right back with the printout. Okay. So here's the printout. So you'll see the Cricut. Cricut has to put this border around. That's how the Cricut machine reads it and sets it so that it will cut out. So we need to have that guideline there. Next thing, I'm just going to apply it to my Cricut mat. My Cricut is blinking and ready for me to insert this straight in. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back with the cutouts. Okay. So I'm back and I have my two cutouts and this one's the original. And this was my one that I cut out on the Cricut. And I, I have to say, I am actually liking my colors, uh, more vi they're more vibrant on the one that I print printed at home. Not that I don't like, I like this one just as much, but I really like this one a little bit better. Now I will say when I took it off the mat, I did, was a little impatient and I tore off a little bit there, but I think I'm okay with that. It's okay. Um, it'll cover right up or it's not even going to be noticeable to anybody else but me. And now, and now you, now on the little one, this sometimes happens with the Cricut. And when we're shrinking things down and changing the format, you'll see it's a little bit offset. So I'm not thrilled about that. And you'll also see some of the white lines. So I'm not sure why it did that. That's where my knowledge of the Cricut, um, I, I really don't know, but see, I would just trim off the white the white part because I don't really like that. 
around the edge is a little harder. You might even be able to use your corner rounder on that. And if it really bothered you, you can trim off some of the black that it was too wide on one side. And now I feel like it's a pretty good replica. But see, I liked it because it's smaller. So yeah, I'm gonna tuck this into an embellishment cluster anyway. So again, nobody's gonna really notice the little slight off difference. But if you know how to use your Cricut a little bit better than me, or you're a little bit more patient, probably is what it is. <laughs> I just need to be a little more patient getting it set up to print. But I'm happy with that, and I am definitely going to be using that. Okay, so let's move on and go back to our file and select another one to create. Okay, hold on. Okay, so we are back here and we have both our Cricut on the screen as well as our downloaded files um, are off to the left-hand side. And um, over here in my Cricut, on my Cricut mat, I'm going to go ahead and just delete these from the mat just so I have, um, actually I'll just hide them. I'm just gonna hide them so we don't see them. Okay, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing I'm going to come down over here to the upload, click the upload, and let's go find one that's a little bit more challenging and that we have to do a, that one little extra step on. Okay, um, I did the blue balloons are the ones I showed you earlier. You know what, let's do these colored balloons. I don't think I've done those yet. So we're going to, I highlighted it. I'm going to come over here to my Cricut and I'm going to say um, upload an image. Again, we have our drag and drop or we can browse. I already have it on my screen here. So I'm going to come back over here, highlight it again, and then I'm going to click it, hold it and drag it to my Cricut. Okay. Let me change the screen to just my Cricut view now. Uh, we're back here in the Cricut and we're back to our selection where we have to select the um, image type. Again, we have a very simple cuts here, so we, and very limited colors, so we're fine collect, uh, saying simple image type. If you feel more comfortable, you can select the other ones um, if you want to. Okay, and then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, down here, and press continue. It's gonna bring it in, and here's where we see the background with the little blue dots or squares, um, whatever whatever you're seeing on your side. I, I, for me, it kind of looks like um, a checkered pattern. Okay, and you'll see that every area is filled in. So everything behind the balloons is filled in and that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and say, apply and continue. And again, we come in here. This one on the left-hand side would be a basic cut. You can um, put one of these in and then you can uh, cut out balloons you put with cardstock it would just all be the same color it, it wouldn't you wouldn't be able to break out you know black strings and blue balloons and yellow balloons and red balloons it would all just be uh, one color cut okay but over here what we want to work on today is the print and cut so I'm gonna go ahead and select that by clicking it I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna say upload that's gonna take it into my Cricut for me, okay, and there it is. So now it's in my program, my personal program of my Cricut, okay? So to um, enter that onto a, a canvas, we click it to select it, come over here to add to canvas, and there we go. Again, it came in super huge, so we want to shrink that a little bit, and we're gonna go to about a three. Um, actually, that's gonna be the width, so let's say a two. And then for the height, we'll say a three. I'm just checking to see if these balloons came with our embellishment pack. I Or maybe I've even used them already. I'm not seeing them in my embellishment pack right now. So I'm measuring the um, blue balloons that came with the embellishment pack and they are actually about four inches tall. So I'm gonna change it, to, uh, change the height to four. And then they are approximately two and a quarter. So I'm gonna change it to 2.25. Okay, let me slide it over here. So we have to do a little bit extra step on this one because if we go to print this right now, it's gonna 
try and cut out all in between and it's gonna not print very nicely. So what we have to do in this one is we have to come up here to the offset and click it. This is what gives us the white behind the balloons like we saw with the blue ones. And we wanna add that to kind of like keep it all in place. Okay, so it'll give us a little landing place for our balloons. So it comes in automatically at a quarter of an inch and you can see that's pretty wide. But if you like a lot of white space behind your elements, then you um, can certainly keep that. I like to have a little bit less white space. So you'll see I went over the zero mark, took it all the way. This one, you could barely see it. I'm not sure you can see it on the screen, but it's super close to the edge of the balloon. So again, if that's your style, then you can try that. I'm going to just put a little bit and in fact, I want it a little less than that. So I'm actually going to click it up here and put in a custom. I'm going to try 0 0.075. That made it really small. I'm going to try it even smaller on this one. I think it was 0 .7, 0 0.075 is what I used on the blue ones, but I want to try and go a little bit smaller. So now here, if you see this section right here, that's why I'm getting a little cut on my blue balloon like I was showing at the beginning. It's going to try and cut out a little section here and that's because I put in a very narrow white space. If you don't want that cut, you just want to make it a little larger. You see how I'm making it larger and the white cut goes away. But I do want to try cutting it a little bit bigger or a little bit less white space this time. So I'm going to go 0.5 and then you, when you're happy with it, you have to you have to click apply now once i clicked apply it it's coming in as black that's just because that's the color of the offset okay i don't want offset to be black i want it to be white so i need to change the color so i come up here i find the white i click it and it goes to white okay now two more quick steps we want to highlight the whole thing we want to attach it. This way the balloons are now attached to the, the um, offset and anywhere it goes, they will go together. Okay. Let me detach it and show you what I mean. So if I don't attach them, I'm separating the balloons from the offset. I don't want to do that. I want them to always stay together. So I'm going to attach them. And then what I found works best for me is when I, I need to flatten it at this point so that I can print it and cut it. So I flatten and now it's ready for a print and cut. Okay, so you'll see it over here. It's a print and cut. Let's unflatten and you'll see it was going to print, um, print them separately. It was going to print the offset as one and the balloons as another. So let's flatten that. Okay, we're ready to print. So I want to say make it. Here it is on my mat. It's just showing you a preview in case you want to change it, you can go back and change something. And so I'm going to say continue. And I'm going to say send to my printer. So it's ready. I'm going to push print and send it to the printer. Okay, so I'm back. I got it from the printer. Again, it has our lines that the Cricut needs to read in order to know how to cut it. I'm going to put it on my mat. All this is very you know, typical like we do when, when we're cutting anything on our Cricut. Okay, my Cricut is blinking and it's ready for me to go insert, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back with the cut and it came out pretty nice. Now, a couple of things I wanted to talk about. So, paper definitely matters. I had talked about how the ink and your printer will, will determine how, the coloring, but so will your paper and the cutting quality of your paper as well. I just realized as I was taking this off the mat that I used a different cardstock. This one is a little bit more rough and when it cut, you might be able to see, I'll put it up here, see some um, feathering around the outside. Now, first thought I was thinking, oh, maybe my blade needs to be changed, but I know that's not the case because this is a relatively new blade and I haven't used it that often. So you'll see in between here, um, I had to trim a little bit off when it came off the mat. So that's because of my paper. So typically I use a smoother finishing, a smoother finish. I like to use the Nina cardstock because it is acid free. 
So if that's a concern of yours, um, look into that. Also, you can cut down your 12 by 12 white cardstock, cut it down so it can fit into your printer. I've done that before too. I've cut this into by, um, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So it will go into my printer. So that works as well. So that wraps up my little tutorial. I hope that helped. If you liked anything about this video, please give me a thumbs up. I really would appreciate it. That helps my uh, YouTube algorithm spread to other people who might want to hear this content. And also it would help YouTube know that maybe you're interested in this kind of content and maybe you'll start seeing some other videos popping up in your um, inbox from other people. Again, I'm very happy with my cutouts. I hope that I've inspired you to give these digital art kits a try. Uh, they do have three different price points um, depending on the number of elements they include in each pack. They, it ranges anywhere from $4.95 to $14.95. Now, the Showtime was a really big pack because it included all the elements, papers, and the mat pack. So that one was uh, the $14.95 price point. But if you have any you know, questions about that, if you already have a Creative Memories Advisor, then please purchase through, through her. And if, if you do not have a Creative Memories Advisor, I would love to help you out with that. You can use my shopping link down below. Um, if you have any questions, my email will also be listed below. And that's it for today. Until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.